Hello and welcome everyone for my fifth webinar today. Um, this is the last webinar in the series of uh, landing into your dream job. Today we'll be covering uh, countries like Australia and New Zealand and job opportunities for international students there. Um, this is not the end of it. I'll be coming with more such webinars which will be of great interest for international students and students who are really looking to go abroad and build their career and explore study options. So um, let's just begin with my introduction. I'm Juhi Jani. I take care of international marketing and outreach at the Zoom Abroad Online. Now, Zoom Abroad Online is an innovative uh, education consultancy in the field of international student recruitment. And soon we'll be coming up with some innovative products which will be of great value for students. So um, that is the reason I always tell you all to stay tuned with us. Um, do follow us on on social media and to register on our website um, which will definitely ensure uh, something of great value for you if you decide in future to go abroad and study so that's about uh, my introduction and let's just come to the topic um, New Zealand and Australia they are now recently gaining a lot of popularity amongst international students and talking about Australia Amongst the English speaking nations, Australia is currently the third most populous country uh, for international students uh, behind the United States of America and the United Kingdom. So the reason why students choose to go and study in Australia and New Zealand, uh, one, because of its cultural diversity, uh, friendly natives, so Australian and New Zealand people, they are quite welcoming uh, towards international students and they do value a lot of skills. Um, so that is the reason the, the whole country becomes favorable for a student to go and study there. And also on top of it, the quality of education. So um, talking about um, Australian degree, so they have an impressive international reputation of Australian education system worldwide and graduates from Australian universities are highly sought after. The degrees of um, um, Australian universities are highly accepted worldwide. Similarly with New Zealand. So being a small country, New Zealand has always been a economically stable uh, country and it has always shown the sign of development. Also, the reason of attracting a lot of international students is the quality of education in New Zealand. Um, in such a small country, around eight universities are there, which ranked amongst the top universities in the world. So which, again, is of great importance and deciding factor for you um, into people if you want to go and uh, look for study options in New Zealand. And... Uh, Talking about the cost of living in these two countries, so uh, the standard of living of Australia and New Zealand is comparatively amongst the highest in the world. But if you see the expenses and like uh, tuition fees and other expenses which a, a student has, it's far more less than what you'll incur in the United States of America or the United Kingdom. Um, so the, the, the standard of living is automatically way too high. Also, the country allows a student to, to work part-time and um, uh, work while you're studying. So that also becomes a major reason because you can sustain yourself financially while you're studying in that country. So um, there are a couple of factors which make these countries quite favorable for international students. One important thing for Australia that... Uh, technology and research is the prime reason why students are choosing Australia for their study options. Because um, Australia has always been at the forefront of technology and innovation. So students who are studying in Australia, they can really take the advantage of the country's impressive technology and research resources. And most of the students, they do go there and uh, pursue research and uh, um, higher studies in the technical uh, field. So that is again uh, one thing which you can keep in mind while choosing your options for studying option. Also diversity of education. So there are various types of courses available in both of these countries and students can actually pick the right 
kind of course and it's not limited to any particular stream um, so there are various various types of courses available which you can go and explore and even uh, try to build your career in that so these are certain favorable factors of these two countries uh, now talking about the work rights so both of these countries they allow you to work while you're studying so 20 hours per week during the term time while you're studying and 40 hours during your vacations also uh, they do promote a lot of internship a lot of part-time training uh, part-time jobs outside the campus where students can go and gain some real-time experience in the field of their study or also if not if they can build some others if they want to build some other skills they can go and study uh, sorry go and work so um, that is again a very important uh, factor for that but talking about uh, post study what happens uh, once you are done with your degree so uh, in Australia so there are no automatic rights associated with your student visa on uh, so it doesn't say that if you have a student visa you can automatically stay after uh, your degree and uh, search for work you have to apply for a um, temporary graduate temporary work visa which is called as 485 skilled graduate temporary visa now there are a couple of other visas are uh, associated uh, with the graduate jobs but all other visas would need a sponsor um, a employer beforehand you go and apply for this otherwise once you are done with your degree the immediate uh, and if you don't have a job and you want to stay in the country and look for the job the immediate visa what you can apply is 485 skilled graduate temporary visa and uh, uh, with this uh, visa you are allowed to stay in the country for 18 months and uh, you can uh, look for the job related to your field of study gain experience and uh, uh, you can then decide that what you want to uh, uh, do with it as either you want to settle in the country because Australia also have a clear Path of permanent residency for example um, if you are have completed your degree in Australia and if and if you wish to settle in that country permanently it's a clear-cut path it's based on point system and uh, the I think the detailed uh, visa part of it uh, my colleague Tanu has already covered in her last webinar where she spoke about the uh, visa, um, visa opportunities for uh, students who wish to go to Australia and New Zealand however um, on the government websites of Australia and uh, New Zealand you can actually see that how the point system is calculated and how you can you apply for the uh, residentship if you wish to uh, stay there permanently Otherwise, uh, 18 months is a pretty good time for you to look for a job, find a job, gain some experience and decide what you want to do further. So this is uh, with Australia. Now, uh, with New Zealand, what happens once you are done with your uh, study is that, uh, okay, one more point in Australia that you can only apply for this uh, 485 skilled graduate temporary visa um, if you have been in the country and if you have taken a course of minimum two years duration so if you are thinking that if you are on a short term course of say nine months or 12 months or eight, uh, 18 months um, you won't be able uh, you won't be eligible to apply for this particular visa so keep that in mind that the minimum uh, course duration has to be two years so yeah coming to new zealand so um, what happens post study now depending on the area of your study uh, there is an opportunity for you to stay and work in new zealand up to four years now when i say up to four years they have a lot of conditions related to it but the graduate path normally has two steps one is your post uh, post study work visa which is open to all with this you uh, if the uh, person who is recently graduated from a New Zealand university, um, they can actually stay in the country for 12 months, look for the job in the field of their study and gain some experience. Uh, the next path is post-study work visa, which is employer assisted. Now, the, this visa, uh, it's... Uh, 
it's regulated by an employer, but it lets a graduate to stay in the New Zealand to gain work experience in the field of the study for another two years or three years. So 12 years is open for all. And if you find an employer there, you can again extend your stay for another two more years, if possible, three more years. Um, depending on the field of study or if the work experience, uh, if that sort of work, work experience is required for your professional registration. So, um, but the only condition with this visa is that it's related to uh, a specific job and a specific employer. You can't get this visa and go and look for employment or change uh, different employers. That is not possible. But there is a clear cut path that you can stay in the country after your studies for four years and then you can easily apply for uh, your uh, permanent residency as you can apply for in Australia. So these um, uh, factors are there um, uh, when you have to consider that if you really want to stay in the country post your studies or not. So um, we have covered the work rights uh, while you're studying and once you're done with your studies for Australia and New Zealand. Now, talking about the graduate job. So what happens to the job uh, once you are done uh, with your study? So uh, let me tell you, both the countries, Australia and New Zealand, they are highly uh, accepting uh, young graduates, international graduates with a lot of skills, dig, um, uh, the degree in, in, of that particular country, and some advanced um, skills which can add on to their uh, economy. So both these countries are always in a need of highly skilled uh, uh, students so do keep that in mind there is ample of opportunities for you guys so um, and uh, let me tell you for Australia this is the world's number one expat destination um, the reason is very clear because of its huge economic growth low unemployment uh, employment rates because the country has uh, uh, low unemployment ratings and high standard of living um, Average salaries are comparatively higher in the country. So it makes obvious that, you know, uh, it, this is the best choice for you uh, in terms of uh, choosing a place to work and set your career. So uh, let me tell you, Australian economy is dominated by service sector. Uh, so uh, the service sector itself accounts for 70% of the country's GDP and also generates 75% of the graduate jobs. So the opportunity is huge. And if you want to explore your career in service sector, I guess um, uh, Australia is your place. Uh, some of the country's major industries, which are uh, the foundation of the country's economy, is agriculture, chemical industry, uh, food processing, industrial and transportation equipments, mining, and tourism. Tourism is again a big thing in Australia. But amongst these sectors, the recent growth sectors are uh, where, the, where a lot of job opportunities are getting created. It's in construction education and training, mining, manufacturing, and public administration. There are a lot of public administration um, jobs recently have been uh, published for um, Australia. So um, students, do you do have a lot of uh, opportunities in this sector as well. Now, every country, uh, not just Australia or New Zealand, uh, every country uh, on their government website, they have a list of shortage occupation. So, which means that um, the list which is there, the country is always in demand of uh, uh, people who are with uh, these mentioned skills. And uh, especially for Australia and New Zealand, if you fall under these categories, you um, your, your probability increases tenfold to be in the country and uh, get a better work uh, opportunity. So uh, do uh, visit their government website and check that if your skill fall into that category, then your chances increases a lot. Um, so uh, talking about Australia, the current shortage occupation includes, there are a lot of it, but I've just um, um, narrowed it down to some four or five, which is of highly um, 
uh, required, uh, which is in the highly required list. So um, amongst that, accountants, uh, healthcare staff, now uh, nurses, healthcare assistants, medical assistants, uh, medical secretaries, they are of great uh, uh, value. They are always short of staff uh, in Australia there. So if you are from a healthcare industry, uh, do consider going to um, study and work there. Um, automotive and electricians are also in the shortage occupation list and uh, because it's a uh, the tourism is the big industry there so there's always a demand for chefs uh, from different countries uh, bakers and uh, tourist guides and uh, tourist management people so um, do keep that in mind uh, as well uh, also teachers um, so primary and secondary teachers so if you uh, if if teaching is something which interests you and if you, you want to explore it further then i think uh, you can also give it a try in australia so this is the job scene in australia now talking about new zealand so in new zealand if you have the right skill and experience it is always a good time to go and work in new zealand so it's always an ideal place to go and find the work um, but the success of your job hunt will always depend on the sector you're looking for so um, there are uh, certain sectors which are um, under tremendous growth and currently in new zealand this industries which are experiencing that level of growth is engineering IT and medicine. So if you um, want to pursue your higher studies in these sectors, I think uh, New Zealand should be the first choice for you. Uh, the reason we have already discussed. Um, however, there are also ample of opportunities um, to contribute to a more generalized skill. So if you are not, if you're not from these um, sectors, um, you still don't get discouraged because there are uh, a lot of um, requirement for generalized skills as well. Uh, so talking about the major industries in the country, um, it includes agriculture, construction, financial services is a big thing in New Zealand, uh, manufacturing, real estate and again tourism is also like australia it's a big thing in new zealand uh, but amongst these sector um, in, in the last year the recent employment growth has been seen in uh, especially manufacturing sector food production um, equipment manufacturing and textile manufacturing so these four sectors are experiencing a lot of growth uh, in the country uh, so um, if you are from the same uh, background this is the right time for you to enter in the country um, as i said um, every country has a skills shortage list which is mentioned on their government website so for new zealand also it's no different how it, and in new zealand spe uh, specifically they have two skills shortages one is of immediate requirement like which they need it right now and other one is the long term which as in they would always be uh, wanting the staff from these particular skills so go and check that and uh, i am uh, again insisting on the fact that if you fall in these shortage occupation category if you if your skills fall into this category your chances to um, get a visa approval your chances to get a job post study it increases many folds so um a plan accordingly uh, do some research before even um, looking for the courses see which background you come from in terms of your uh, educational skills and if that can fit into um, the shorted skills stuff then um, nothing like it then you your your job is sorted in that case in this in these countries at least so yeah that's about it and um, so uh, in new zealand there are a lot of um, you know uh, opportunities are there for graduate jobs however um, the competition also is a lot so uh, while looking for jobs and uh, while uh, applying for jobs do not limit yourself with just full-time employment 
what do i mean by that that um, uh, also consider employments which are part time or contract based because these employment will land you into your permanent employment and uh, um, so uh, there are a couple of contract and as i said uh, these countries promote a lot of internship a lot of part time practical training so um, keep a growth mindset be open minded when you look for jobs applying for jobs and um, if you're getting any uh, part time and contract uh, jobs first before even getting a full time go for it because that will crave a path for your permanent uh, employment so um that's about it for these two countries and i think this brings the end of our webinar um if you have any questions do let me know if you have it now i can address it if not you can email it to me my email id is juhi.jani at the rate zoom abroad dot com Uh, you can also follow us on our social media platform you can uh, send any query if you have you can send the query on our facebook page and do register on our website guys i always um, insist on it that we are coming up with an innovative product which will be of great value for you guys who want to go and study abroad um, and make your dream come true so that's about it i think we don't have any questions now um that's not a problem i am always available to address your questions offline do send me an email for that and if you have any other suggestion for which we can uh, do a webinar and have a discussion um you're more than welcome do come up with suggestions and uh, that's about it and it has been a wonderful uh, five webinar series it has been a pleasure hosting a webinar for you all i hope i have added some value to it and uh, you have a better process now a plan in your hand where you can uh, you know plan your journey of planning into the job what you always want to do so that's about it i'll take a leave you guys take care and um, i'll come up with um, some new webinars and i'll publish them on my facebook page and then we can Go ahead with that. Till then, take care. Bye bye.